What up, everybody? This Sunday evening, Iceman here on the Jeffrey Rose YouTube channel, the Iceman V2013 channel, and we are like less than an hour and a half away for TNA's Bound for Glory tonight, uh, which will air in the United States tonight. Anyway, uh, obviously the pay-per-view has already been, you know, come and gone. For those that want to see the results, can, you know, obviously go to the internet and find out what they are. I, for one, never do that. I also have the Giants in Philadelphia against the Eagles tonight for the NFL. I'm watching Dallas and Seattle right now, and actually Dallas is ahead of Seattle in Seattle, which I was very shocking. But anyway, I was just reading up on some wrestling news, and I found it uh, pretty interesting that um, at an indie show, uh, Earl Hebner... Uh, was there, and so wasn't Bret Hart. And Bret Hart and Earl Hebner finally had buried the hatchet. That has been, you know, with these guys since 1997, uh, the Montreal Screwjob, in which Earl was the referee, that Vince made him ring the bell, saying that Bret Hart submitted to Shawn Michaels, because Vince did not want Bret Hart to take off going to WCW with the WWF title. It's been all these years, 97 guys. Um, so you're, you know, you're talking what, 17, 17 years. So um, finally, Bret and Earl Hebner uh, shook hands, hugged. Matt Hardy was there at the show and he said, uh, you know, it really was a touching moment. There was a, a lot of dissension amongst Bret Hart and Earl Hebner for all these years. and um, But, you know, you got to look at it this way. Earl Hebner under contract, as well as Bret Hart was that for that night anyway, um, was just doing what the boss told him to do, just like the superstars in the WWE today do. And this is why, you know, a lot of these guys, I don't understand why they get the hate that they get because they do their job. But anyway, it was good to see Bret Hart and Earl Hebner bury the hatchet. And it's it's been a long time coming, 17 years. So, but anyway, uh, again, TNA bound for glory tonight. Um, as far as wrestling news and, 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 and rumors go, not a lot going out there, guys. Um, not really... Um, We've really heard very, very little about what's going to happen or what the matches are so far for Hell in the Cell. Uh, it's been very slow pace, very slow going. And I think the absence of Brock Lesnar as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion has a lot to do with this. Um, the WWE is trying to, you know, devise a plan or come up with some matches, you know, obviously in the next couple weeks. On Monday Night Raw to make the show uh, worthwhile to watch. It is Hell in the Cell. It is one of those uh, pay-per-views that should be slightly brutal uh, on these terms these days. I mean, obviously, um, back in older days, Hell in a Cell would be, like, totally brutal. I mean, you'd see guys get cut open and bleed and whatnot. And that, to be quite honest with you, um, these are... Some of the things that I do miss back in the old days of wrestling, back in the NWA days when you, you had platinum blonde um, superstars like Ric Flair, Dusty Rhodes, um, Tommy Rich. I mean, all these guys. I mean, you get into the ring, uh, and the thing about it is when they bled, you saw it because their blonde hair was so blonde, and then the red blood which is so overpowering over that. And it, it, it just made it for, you know, it just made it look more real. You know what I'm saying? So that those were, those were really fun times back in those days. And, you know, and it's, it's a PG era for the WWE. And, you know, in a lot of ways, I don't know why they can't take a little step backwards because back during the Attitude Era and whatnot, the WWE had all these sponsors, and there was no problem getting any sponsorship or anything 
for the USA Network or, you know, whichever network they decided to go. They went to USA. They went to TNN, which changed over to Spike and then back to USA. Um, there was never a problem getting sponsors. And I don't know exactly what the real deal is with the PG era nowadays. Just for the simple fact is, you know, you talk about violence in the world of professional wrestling. You watch on a nightly basis on any network TV show or any cable show. I mean, look at Sons of Anarchy, um, Chicago PD, um, Blue Bloods. I mean, Law and Order SVU. I mean, there's violence everywhere on TV. Um, and the WWE obviously is a WWE, you know, World Wrestling Entertainment Channel. And I, I really just don't see why they need to cut back. Um, and the only thing, uh, thing I can really come up with is that there's a lot of more younger viewers now than there used to be. Obviously, in the Attitude Era, we had a lot of, you know, um, males, you know, probably 18 on up. There was a lot more male fans back then, you know, adults and whatnot. And now there's a lot more children and a lot more women that are involved, um, especially in this WWE era with John Cena, who emerged, you know, really to become a big superstar in the WWE since around like 2004, 2005. So, you know, the younger fans and the women, you know, are pretty much there. So I think the WWE may be just gearing towards that. And the only other thing that I can really come up with is one of the main reasons I think they did go to PG was when because Linda McMahon ran for the Senate on two different occasions. So I think the WWE tried to clean up their act and make themselves look a lot better than what they were in hopes that Linda would end up, uh, you know, winning her election, you know, on election day, which never came to happen. So I don't see her running again. So in my eyes, you know, put a little oomph back into your entertainment, you know, um, Get rid of the rabbit. Get rid of the gator. Get rid of the bull. Please get rid of these animals. Let's have some wrestling. Let's have some wrestling with some impact. You know? Um, I know the chair shots are a lot, you know, to the head. They don't want to do that no more due to a lot of injuries and whatnot. Um, but there's other things you can do with that chair. You know? You go through tables. I mean, tables can be even more devastating than getting hit with a chair because obviously the tables are made of a certain material. Um, but if they break wrong, I mean, you can get jabbed with splinters and whatnot. Um, and there's just so many other variables involved. But anyway, I don't know. I think I've talked a little bit too much. Um, so wrestling in general... I think it's going to pick up. I really do. Um, uh, I think Jeff Jarrett's promotion, Global Force Wrestling, is going to make a major impact. Um, I don't know what this is going to do to TNA Wrestling. I think Dixie Carter needs to really step up her game for 2015. The WWE, you know, regardless of you know how, how they say they're losing money and whatnot, there's still a lot of money there. Um, it's just their choice of whether they want to spend it or not. And um, the bottom line with the WWE is you got talent that's waiting to be aired on live TV. You cannot use the Cena's, the Orton's of the world, the Sheamus's of the world, the Kane's of the world. You it, it, you just can't. Their, their popularity does die out on TV. People get tired of seeing it. The same old stuff. You need to make a change. Yeah, John Cena is the biggest merchandise seller right now by far. But so what? What has that got to do with TV? Keep it separate. You know, push the Ambroses. Push the Rollins. When Reigns comes back, push Reigns. Bring up your NXT guys. Start pushing them. You got the Rusevs of the world. You got the Zigglers of the world. You got the Sheamuses of the world. The Damian Sandows of the world. Bo Dallas. You know, the Wyatts. Push them. 
That's what you need to do is push them. And I'm telling you, you start doing this kind of stuff and continue to do it without just going a few weeks and then boom, put a stop to it. Continue to do it. And I think you're going to see a lot of um, viewership go up. So anyway, this is the Iceman here on this Sunday evening prior to Bound for Glory. I'll be having Bomb for Glory on. I'm also going to have the Giants-Eagles game on. Uh, you know, I can't watch one without watching the other. Got to watch them both. So, peace out, everybody. Have yourself a great Sunday. I have a, like a 15-hour workday tomorrow. A uh, firefighter that was fallen uh, earlier this week here in Hartford, uh, fighting a blaze, had passed away. And work is expecting like 10,000 plus people for this major event for tomorrow. So I'll be there for a very long day. And obviously it's for a good cause and I wouldn't miss it for the world. So everybody have a great night. See you next time.